This is a game called Racetrack. It can be played on graph paper or online against numerous opponents on any racetrack that you can design. This game was my motivation to create and implement a shortest path algorithm. First, notice the distinction between shortest path and shortest time. Even though the red circle has a longer path, it still finishes first because its average velocity is high enough to finish sooner than the blue circle, which has to accelerate and decelerate every time it makes a sharp corner, much like a car. My algorithm will be finding the shortest path, which neglects accelerations and other things that may affect the time of travel. After some amount of searching and tinkering with various algorithms and optimization methods, I found the A-star algorithm, which specializes in node-based pathfinding in a grid of nodes. At any given node, or at an intersection of grid lines on a piece of graph paper, there are eight surrounding nodes. In order to find the shortest distance between two nodes, we can minimize the travel cost. Traveling to a node directly above, below, or to the sides will have a travel cost of 10. Traveling to a node in the corner will have a travel cost of 14, because the length of the hypotenuse of a unit 45-45-90 triangle is 1.414, which when multiplied by my triangle length side of 10, will give me the hypotenuse length or travel cost of around 14. Moving on, each node carries 10 pieces of information to characterize it. The first piece of information is that each node has a node number. In this example, there are 100 nodes, numbered 1 through 100, vertically. Each node has a set of x and y coordinates, specifying its location in the graphics window. The third piece of information is something called the g-cost. The g-cost is the cost to travel from the start node to the current node, and here's an example. The green node is the start node, the red node is the end node. Let's add three obstruction nodes, and finally the blue node is our current node. In this example, the g-cost would be 20, because the start node and current node are two vertical nodes away, with each vertical node having a travel cost of 10, which makes a total g-cost for the current node of 20. The h-cost is similar to the g-cost. It is the cost to travel from the current node to the end node. In this example, two diagonal nodes are visited, followed by two horizontal nodes. So the h cost is 14 plus 14 plus 10 plus 10, which equals 48. Note that the g and h costs don't consider the existence of the obstruction nodes. Moving on, the f cost is simply the sum of the g cost and the h cost, which in this case is 20 plus 48, which equals 68. The parent node number is the node that found the current node or parented it. We'll talk more about this in a bit. The obstruction node lets the algorithm know if the node is an obstruction or not. And the last three bits of information are the null, closed, and open set. If a node is in the null set, it hasn't been seen or visited. If a node is in the closed set, the node has been visited. Finally, if the node is in the open set, it has been seen, but it hasn't been visited yet. Now let's take a step-by-step -step view of my implemented algorithm in MATLAB. As before, I'll pick my start node, my end node, and my obstruction nodes. And now the algorithm has begun. Our current node is the start node, so we add it to the closed set. The surrounding nodes in blue are added to the open set. Each of the surrounding nodes includes the g-cost in the upper left corner, the h-cost in the upper right corner, and the f-cost on the bottom. The algorithm searches the nodes in the open set for the smallest f-cost. This node, with the smallest f-cost of 70, is now the current node, and we add it to the closed set. New nodes are found and added to the open set. Let's take another step. The algorithm searches once again for the lowest f cost, which is now 76. The problem is that three nodes share the same f cost. So for these three nodes, the lowest h cost is selected, which is 52. And that node is now the current node. Here's something important. For all of the new surrounding nodes, the algorithm searches to see if it is cheaper to arrive at any one node from the current node or a previous node. It then sets its g-cost and parent accordingly. For example, the g-cost in the node directly under our current node is 28, because traveling diagonally from the start node to the previous node, and then diagonally again, is cheaper than traveling diagonally from the start node right to the current node, and then down, which would have had a travel cost of 34. So the parent of this node is this node, because it is cheaper to arrive from this node. It may seem obvious to you that this path is the shortest path. But this node hasn't been tested yet, and so the computer doesn't know that this path exists, but it may eventually. Let's finish this example. The lowest f cost is now 76, 
shared between two nodes both having an h cost of 66. One is randomly selected, and now the lowest f cost is the other node. The lowest f cost is now 82, shared between two nodes, again having the same h cost. We continue this until the end node is reached. The final path is found by following the lineage of parents. Starting at the end node, we find its parent node, then that's parent parent, until we arrive back at the start. The nodes we traced follow the shortest path that was found. Here are some interesting findings that I've discovered. If I make the G cost more expensive, a thousand times more expensive in this example, the solution takes much more time by trying to stay as close as possible to the start. This does, however, ensure the shortest path possible. If I make the H cost more expensive, again, a thousand times more expensive in this example, the solution is found much quicker by trying to get as close as possible to the end node. But there are some obvious mistakes made. It would clearly be faster to cut straight across this gap. We see that an optimization problem arises on how to weight the G and F costs for the different maps it may encounter. And this is why algorithms are so much fun to play with. No algorithm is perfect, so you can always keep improving. Hey guys, thanks for watching, and don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe for more content.